Midlife Course Correction by Armando Camina Read by Rick Furley I could have enjoyed the sand between my toes with a subtle breeze running across my brow. Instead, after a long day at the television station, I snuck over to Vernon's, my favorite watering hole and one of the oldest spots in Corpus Christi, Texas. It attracted people from all walks of life, the young, the wealthy, and the folks who were down to their last dollar. At Vernon's, you can conveniently converse or just enjoy a little solitude in a quiet corner. This particular night, I was sitting at the end of the seemingly never-ending bar. People were scattered about the room, a couple in the dimly lit dining area, and a handful of people sat at the bright, well-advertised bar. I was committed to enjoying my Heineken and spending another evening with my own thoughts. Not very different from the many other evenings of watching the Vernon scene unfold. Vernon's provided the perfect backdrop to bizarre personalities and curious seekers. That was the attraction. You never knew who you were going to meet and what stories you were going to hear. Hey, Mondo! I turned away from the sports station to see a man about 25 years old walking toward me with purpose. Sadly, my cynical nature kicked into high gear. I thought, what is he selling? And how much money is he going to need? Being involved in the media business can make you cynical about people and their intentions. I gave him a nod and waited for his approach. He squared up, gave my hand a firm shake, and said, I know you don't know me, but I need your help. You really think I can help you? What are you asking of me? I need your advice, he replied. My wife just gave me an ultimatum. I either have to find work or she will leave with my kids. I've really tried, but I just haven't received a solid job offer. Opportunities start off promising, but end in disappointment. I know this sounds crazy, but I have a gut feeling that tells me you can give me an answer. I felt his eyes on me, peering into my mind and into the future. He was really looking for a solution. When I looked at him, I felt his pain. But my plan for the evening was just to have a couple of beers and head home. I drew a deep, uncomfortable breath that made my chest overexpand. Save his marriage, I thought. I can't even save my own. My life had its own problems, and helping a total stranger was not in the cards for the night. He had entrenched himself on the bar stool and wasn't going to move until he got his answer. I raised my finger and said, Give me a moment. I have always been quick on my feet. So, despite my unease with this request, I thought I could wing it and send the poor fellow on his way. As I worked to clear my mind, I suddenly found myself thinking about an old television interview I conducted with a strange and wonderful chap named Dr. Nolan Myers. Nolan had come to Corpus Christi on sabbatical. He worked and lived in New York City, having grown up in the great state of Kentucky. He came highly recommended as one who could explain spirituality in simple terms to a television audience. People who knew him called Nolan a holy man, a shaman who had the ability to heal through his words. We booked him as a guest, and boy did he shine. To this day, that was one of our best shows. I particularly remembered how he ended our interview. He looked straight into the camera and said, Gratitude leads to faith. Faith is all. As I replayed that scene in my head, I felt and heard a deep, resonating voice rising slowly. The hairs on my neck stood up, and my mind and ears were at complete attention. I thought my imagination was running wild. I took a deep breath 
and waited for what came next. Then a calming voice said, Ask him to do the following. He must follow the simple exercise. Say thank you three times per day. He is to follow this routine for 21 straight days. Recite these words every morning, noon, and evening. In the silence that followed, I said nothing, not knowing what to think. My rational side wanted to discount this entire experience as personal mind games under stress. Anyhow, this was silly advice and not worth repeating, even to a complete stranger to whom I would have told almost anything so he would get off my back. Again, the voice returned with complete command and authority to express the same advice with urgency. Just follow through. Do not ask why. This was a new experience, and I could not figure out what it was or why the voice spoke to me. But I reasoned, if this will make this awkward situation disappear, I will deliver the message. I opened my eyes. Okay. I started slowly, honestly confused about the potential effectiveness. This is the answer. I repeated the words I had just heard to him. If you do this exercise, there's a good chance everything will work out. I waited for a snicker or a rolling of the eyes, something that communicated what I had just said was remarkably terrible. Instead, he smiled in relief and said, Done. He left his half-empty drink and walked out of the bar. Life at Vernon's rolled on. As I laid my head on my pillow later that night, the experience was still fresh in my mind. Who was that voice I heard? And why was it so important to share those words to this particular person? Saying thank you did sound good, but I felt it was too simple of a solution for such a big problem. I turned off the lights, rolled over, and fell asleep without trouble. Over my morning coffee, I again thought about what happened at Vernon's the night before. My main concern was the mental state of thank you guy. Would he be upset if my advice did not work? Would he come looking to harm me? Not trying to sound paranoid, but I felt these were legitimate questions. You never know what a desperate man may be thinking. To put my worries to rest, I came to the conclusion that this was just an odd experience that would fade away with time. Besides, I learned early in my media career that your head is always on the chopping block. Get over it. About a month later, with the memory completely washed away, I came home on a Saturday night content to watch television or read a book. My focus was just to relax and turn off the daily grind. Instead, the phone rang. The voice on the other end was my pal and producer, Paul Fletcher. Stop what you're doing and meet me at Vernon's. I have important stuff to share. Paul is a natural when it comes to his craft. He also has a calming influence with his insight and stories. Genuine company is sometimes hard to find on a Saturday night. So off I went. The late night Vernon's crowd was in full swing as I walked into the saloon. I immediately found Paul holding court with some media types who were sitting at the next table. I cut through the crowd, greeted Paul, and ordered a drink for each of us from a nearby waitress. Before I could sit down, I felt a tap on my shoulder. When I turned around, it was Thank You Guy. I hadn't seen him for four weeks. In an instant, my mind started racing and my body tensed up. 
I expected to feel the pop of a fist straight to my nose and the embarrassment that would follow. Having someone strike you is not an uncommon nightmare for a local television personality. I waited for his next move. He did lunge at me, no surprise, but what I didn't expect was the huge bear hug he wrapped me in. I could feel his positive energy pouring into me, like he had just won the biggest game of his life. There was joy all around him as he let go and squared up with me. I'm so happy to see you that I just couldn't help hugging you. Your advice did work. It truly worked. I said thank you three times a day for 21 days. Sometimes I even said it more than three times. In fact, I'm still saying it. Here's the good news. Last week before I left the house to search for work, I received a call from an engineering firm in Dallas. I had interviewed with them about three months ago, but nothing came of it. Seems they lost funding to expand and my position was part of the expansion. Here he paused, a huge smile on his face. My insides screamed while I waited for what I got the feeling was a happy ending. Okay, so maybe it had a little bit to do with the huge hug he had given me a few moments ago, but I chalked it up to anticipation. Out of the blue, he continued, the funding returned, so they called to see if I was still interested in joining their firm. I have my U-Haul packed, and my family and I are leaving tomorrow morning. I was hoping to get to see you before I left Corpus Christi. Thank you, Mondo. I appreciate the fact you took the time to help me. You were the right person for my situation. After shaking my hand with great enthusiasm, he quickly left the bar. I was surprised. I felt freaked out. What did I just hear? As he walked away, it struck me. Geez, I thought. I still don't even know his name. Turning back to Paul, I saw he had a curious look on his face as I spoke. Paul, my friend, do I have an amazing story to share with you. I still can't believe what has just happened. I hope you can make sense out of it. I told him about the advice the voice gave and how even though it sounded goofy, I shared it. Paul smiled and said, I'm not a religious guy and I know you aren't either, but I really do believe there is a force that can teach you a better way. Some people call this force the Holy Spirit. It comes when you are ready. He paused, scanning the room while he searched for the right words. I'm your friend, so I'm going to be honest with you. I think the voice was speaking to you, too. Thinking about you and your current problems, you would be wise to follow the advice you gave that fellow. The thank you exercise does not sound painful or time-consuming. What have you got to lose? Only three seconds a day. He took a sip of his scotch and continued. And as for your friend, I believe you just gave him a midlife course correction. In my mind, I said, wow, Nolan was right. Gratitude leads to faith. Faith is all. So, here's what I learned. The foundation of gratitude begins with two simple words. Thank you. These two words are as powerful as a mustard seed in moving mountains from your life. They will even soften a jaded life. Say thank you three times per day. All it takes is one second three times a day to start your midlife course correction. As for me, mine is just beginning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.